So you're looking at the list for today there, Kirsty? Yeah, there's not too much going on, is there? Mm, well, don't so speak too you're not soon. telling me, Scott. <laughs> at the Richmond well, practice, Kirstie. Scott and receptionist Kirsty are awaiting the arrival of a very unusual patient. Hi, guys. An orphan fox Hi. is being brought in Healy. by Scott's hey, friends, Andy and Kirsty. Kirsty, this is red. The young couple run an alpaca farm in Yorkshire, but often volunteer to take on wildlife that has nowhere else to go. Kirsty's favourite animal is a fox. <laughs> so you've literally <laughs> made her day. You made her week. <laughs> red was found as a cub. There were several attempts to return her to the wild, but after the last release, she was discovered emaciated and close to death. Hello, beautiful. I mean, how rare is it you can actually touch what should be a wild animal? <laughs> With Red unable to survive in the wild, Andy and Keely volunteered to give her refuge. We've got a large enclosure uh, within a captive environment where she would be perfectly cared for and we can offer her protection. And although it sounds very cheesy, a lot of love. But before Red can move into her new home, she first needs to be desexed. The spay is really important for Red for a number of reasons. First of all, to try and rule out things like ovarian cancers and mammary tumours, but also when Red goes back to the farm, she's a captive animal. So of course we don't want her to have any babies, but also if she calls to male foxes, there's a lot of other vulnerable animals at the farm that could be injured. I know. Can we just do a quick exam just to make sure that she's okay for the spay? Yeah. Uh, and we know we're doing the right thing for her. All right, let's have a little look at your baby girl. Okay. Look at those, you wouldn't want to be bitten by those, would you? Okay. I'm just amazed that I can touch this fox without her trying to bite me or run away. To look into her mouth, her eyes, have a look at her ears, listen to her heart, these are all firsts for me and it's absolutely incredible. You know, looking at her makes you rethink what the vast majority of people think about foxes. It's true, yeah. Yeah, they do get a bit of a bad reputation, unfortunately. They do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Especially around here when they go and eat uh, people's pet rabbits and guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Foxes really do polarise people here in the UK. They either love them or they hate them, especially when their numbers are increasing rapidly in urban areas. Now, they might live in close proximity to us, but they're still wild animals. They shouldn't be approached by the general public. But because of Red's history, she's very much a one-off case. I don't see there being any risks to this particular procedure. With Red passing her health check, the spaying of the young fox can go ahead. I can see how bonded you two are. <laughs> and Keely, I know that you are a vet nurse, if I yes, remember rightly. Right, yeah. So uh, how would you like to help me perform the surgery on your girl? I'd love that. That'd be brilliant, <laughs> yeah. It's good that I can be there for Red, especially she's going under anaesthetic, so there's someone familiar there for her. And Red hopefully feels a little bit more secure with what's going on. I think I'll just sit outside and worry if that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not little girl. Good. As always with animals, you take them on, and as soon as they come into your care, you can't help but become attached to them. It's like adopting a child. Good girl. Mummy's got you. Ready? Ready? Oh, yeah! <laughs> In Brentford, three miles north of Richmond, Scott's new patient, Hugo, is enjoying some playtime with yoga teacher Natalie. Come on! Two months ago, Natalie adopted the bull mastiff after a chance encounter at one of Scott's practices. Hugo! Hugo's previous owner had just come in and was asking for help to rehome the four-year-old. So I was going into the vets to buy some special cat food for our cat and uh, there was this beautiful dog in there, turned out to be Hugo. And basically the guy who had Hugo just said, do you want him? And I was like, what? Look at that happy face, yeah, happy dog. When we met him, he had this lovable nature around him, but there was just this insecurity. You could see that he didn't quite feel safe in the world and I really, related to that and I said that to him and I said you know I'm going to take you by the paw and we're going to do this together you know you and me we're going to feel safe in this world together can you do some up dog with me no just sleep dog 
After her daily yoga session, Natalie will be taking Hugo in to see Scott. The bull mastiff has little medical history, so he needs a thorough vet screening for any potential problems. I think it's just to be sure and to be on the safe side, we just want to have him checked over. Every day I just look at him and just fall in love with him a little bit more. He's just the most gorgeous being and I adore him. I love you. Yes, I do. So, Emma, I've got your patient red here. Yes. At the Richmond practice. Yes, she is. Head nurse Emma is about to meet a surprising patient. This is Keely, and this nice is Red. Hi, oh, sweet pea. Well, that way. You said you were bringing me a patient for a spay. You did not say you were bringing me a box. I oh, know. Oh, my goodness. I know. Isn't so she a beautiful girl? surprise, though? Oh, you hide. You hide. Oh, yeah. She's gorgeous. <laughs> Animal rescuer Keely, who's a trained vet nurse, is joining the team to spay red. It's always a bit more nervy when mum's watching. Yeah. <laughs> Just Don't a you find? little. Yeah. Just a nurse mum. I know. You need to be on her best oh, behaviour today. Hi, sweetie. It's definitely fascinating for me to be here to watch this. I've never seen a fox under anaesthetic before. I've only ever seen them in the wild. So it's nice to be this up close with her doing something um, different, really, nurse-wise. All looks good. She's nice and settled under anaesthetic. Okay, good. A bit nerve wracking, but I'm sure she'll be fine. Okay. It's funny. I just <laughs> randomly feel sort of elated and nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I think it. I think it's a fox. I think it's. It's obviously. It's you know, clearly as cool as you're being about this. Obviously, I know how much you care about this fox, don't you? Upstairs, Red's other owner, Andy, is anxiously waiting. It's always nerve-wracking. It's only a short time, but it seems like hours when you're here waiting. This operation's going to be one of first. Like, I'm just looking at that going, it's not just a spleen, it's a fox spleen. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is a fox something, isn't it? You're going to have a big smile on your face. I'm not I seeing you smile as much for ages. Look at that. It's just because it's amazing. What a great job we've got. Angie and Keely feel it's really important that all the animals that they look after are neutered. So to have this fox spayed is just the right thing for her and for her future to ensure she doesn't have babies. So that, my friends, is that. Red spayed, all done. Let's wake her girl up, shall we? Absolutely. I can barely tell you've been in there. <laughs> Thank you, Keely. You know, I aim to please. <laughs> all right, this Don't is... make his head come in. No, I do. I do love a really small incision line. Hello, expecting Dad. <laughs> Here she is with Mummy. Hello. She's been such a perfect little patient, hasn't she, Keely? She has. She's been like, came around mm. really nicely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. guys, all right. Yeah. yeah. She's ready for the lovely hills of Yorkshire. So, as sad as it is, it might actually be the last time you guys have a proper cuddle with your girl yeah. because. Uh, we need to start encouraging you to be a bit more wild than you are. Mm -hmm. hey? Physically, to be able to hug a fox is without doubt a unique experience. But we don't want Red to be a pet under any circumstances. She'll be a wild animal living within a captive environment. I really hope it's OK if I uh, invite myself up to see this beautiful patient of mine. Yeah, by all means, but if you're coming up anywhere, there's yeah. a few other patients you might want to see. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, possible. Are you, are you going to elaborate at all? Uh, no, I like a little element of surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I like a challenge, so. <laughs> Considering all the crazy animals that he looks after, I'm sure it's going to be lots of fun. Goodbye, gorgeous girl. Can't wait to see you soon, OK? Hello, Sweet. you must be Hugo. Yeah, Hello, this is everybody. Hugo. Yes. Look at you. Hey, you've got to have a voice like that. Has he got a voice like that? At St Margaret's, Natalie has arrived for Hugo's checkup with Scott. Hello, my name's Hugo. And I'm very handsome. He's <laughs> absolutely beautiful, aren't you, mate? Should we go and see you in the consult room? If I have to. Come on then, let's go. Natalie's just got Hugo, so we don't really have much history. So it's really important that we do a full physical exam just to make sure that he's healthy as he starts his new life. 
Can I have an examination of you, hey? Well, I suppose it's for my own good, isn't it? <laughs> Very rarely when I'm treating animals do I hear them speak, but for Hugo, he's got an incredible deep, booming voice in the form of Natalie. The old ticker okay? <laughs> Sounds good, yeah, yeah. So let's have a look at those big choppers, hey? Okay. Ooh. Ooh. But the fun stops when Scott finds a mass in Hugo's mouth. Is that the first time you've seen that, Natalie? Yeah. Whenever you see a lump in the mouth of an animal, that's always a concern. The reason being is that they're very black or white. They're either completely benign and nothing to worry about or fiendishly malignant. And the animals that have that type of tumour can be dead within months. So that's very much something that we need to look at straight away. It's not something we want to leave. Yeah. And particularly uh, the love affair that you guys have already struck. No. <laughs> oh, we don't baby. want to break your relationship up. And I think sometimes we have to jump on these things quickly yeah. and just make sure it doesn't uh, get out of control. Okay. As a vet, we see relationships between owners and animals all the time. But the relationship that Natalie has with this dog so soon is incredible. Mm, I'll probably be fine, Hugo. Eh? Well, she absolutely adores him. Scott will remove the lump immediately and send it off for testing. You're gonna go for a little sleep. And then after that, we'll find out what's wrong. He's only just come into our lives, so I just can't imagine or think about it not being okay. Uh, no, you're staying with I'll me, see buddy. See you later, baby. Bye bye. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know. Oh, he's a good boy. Come on. I know. I know. It's a horrid noise, isn't it? So you get used to it. At the St. Margaret's Clinic, oh, huge oh, bullmastiff Hugo oh, needs to be anesthetised, but he's not going quietly. To knock out Hugo, we need to place an IV catheter, which allows me to give him the anaesthetic he needs. But unfortunately, big Hugo is a bit of a baby and he doesn't like the clippers. And it's all done, mm. see? That is all done, It's all done. Yeah, hey, you're friends again. Thank you. <laughs> we're friends. All right, so sleepy time now. We'll get that nasty lump out of your mouth, shall we? Scott and Nurse Emma can now start removing a suspicious-looking mass on Hugo's gums. OK, one, one two, two, three. three. Now that Hugo's under anaesthetic, I can really see this lump, and it's a very angry-looking thing, and it's extending quite a long way down the enamel of his canine. So what I'm going to do is basically cut it off at where the gum line should be, and hopefully in future that'll mean that he won't bleed as much when he's chewing things. Right, well, Em's alongside the anaesthetist. I need you to be uh, chief lip holder. It's not a title I get assigned every day of the week. No. This isn't the most elegant of surgeries. I'm literally just going to have to lop it off. Away. Okay, one nasty lump removed. All right, so that's that. I think it's time to wake him up. Good boy, there we Good go. Boy. There we go. Oh dear. Hello. The lump will now be sent for testing oh, to find out if it's cancerous. If it is something sinister, it's really concerning. So we'll just have to wait and see, cross our fingers, and hope for the best. Later that evening, Hugo's owner, Natalie, is waiting at the clinic. Oh, I can hear him. Anxious to be reunited with her gentle giant. Ah. Oh. Hello. Here, who's How's this? my boy. Hello. Hello. It's me. I cannot believe you're not more excited. Oh, are you a bit dozy? How's your mouth, Poppy? Yeah, I'm really happy with the results. Yeah. Um, it came out really nicely and now he's got okay. a nice clean gum line. You'll be able to see. So that's normal. And then this is the new one. So you can see it's oh, nice and yeah. straight and clean now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, what a difference. And now we've just got that anxious wait for the next few days. For the results. Yeah. Are you a bit anxious too about it, hey? Uh, yeah. Just hoping for the best, really. You know, coming in for a health check and then spotting something and to have it treated very quickly is brilliant. And then Hugo will hopefully be OK and life can resume as is the new normal, the new normal with Hugo, <laughs> which I can't imagine 
a normal now without Hugo because <laughs> it's just such a fabric of my life already. Come on, Hugo. Come on, champ. Wake Come up. Come on, big fella. Time to go. Yes. Good boy. Thanks, Scott. All See the best, soon. Natalie. Bye, Hugo. Bye. Bye, Bye here's Scott. the man. Thanks, Scott. Bye. Bye, mate. See ya. Bye. I know you want to play ball, don't you? One of Scott's nurses, Sam, is enjoying a day off with her four dogs. Jack, careful! Among them is nine-year-old Jack, who's caused Sam plenty of heartache over the years. I know you want to play ball, but you can't run around. Jack's unfortunately had to have seven major orthopaedic surgeries in the nine years that I've had him. So he's had three hip operations in one hip, uh, he's had another hip replacement in the other hip, he's had cruciate surgery, he's had spine problems and also a plate put in one elbow. Careful! He's actually a bit of an inspiration really because I look at him and just think he's gone through so much. Nothing phases him, he's always wagging his tail. Everyone he meets absolutely loves him. And when you're having a bad day, just think, well, he's got a lot more on his plate than I do. Jack, come here. Jack's medical bills have cost more than £30,000 already. But now the Labrador has yet another issue. There's obviously something wrong with Jack's left hind leg and that has progressed to him being completely lame at times. So I am quite concerned that there is something quite seriously wrong. Good boy. Don't really run in around, hurting us. Sam will soon be taking Jack in to see Scott and she's dreading the diagnosis. Because Jack is a nine-year-old dog, I am worried about putting him through an anaesthetic at this age. I'm tired. No. Jack means the absolute world to me. I've had him since he was 10 weeks old and he's grown up with me and he's a massive part of my life and I couldn't imagine him not being here. Really, I would be heartbroken if anything happened to him. Come on. So, it's the bionic dog. Hi, mate. He is my bionic dog. Oh, dear. Oh, no. I just think it's so gorgeous that he still is just such a friendly chap in the vet clinic to the vet after everything he's been through. It's extraordinary. You're a good boy, aren't you? It's always upsetting when a member of staff, which feel like family, come in with their animals. Should we get you in and have a look at you, hey? So when Sam walks in yet again with Jack, and Jack has a new issue that we need to deal with, of course, straight away I feel for Sam. So I can see immediately there, Sam, that he is not evening up his back leg, so he's taking all the weight yeah. on the right leg and the left leg is taking virtually none. You can just see how easy it is to move that foot and yeah. not that one. Immediately, Scott suspects that Jack has ruptured another cruciate ligament. OK, so I'm going to do something called a cranial draw. It basically just sees if the cruciate ligament, that major ligament running through the joint and mm -hmm. keeping the two parts of the, the leg in alignment. So let's just see. Unfortunately, I can see that there's an abnormality and that there is movement and there shouldn't be. It should be solid and stable. So has his cruciate completely ruptured or go I, going that way? I, I think it's very likely that's the case. Oh, Mr. Jack. So another surgery. Another surgery. Another surgery. Yeah. It's a real shame. It's a, it's a real shame. And, and one thing we obviously have to address, Sam, is, is the fact that these surgeries have happened every year for a lot of years. Mm. But now what we've got is a nearly 10-year-old dog. Yeah. And that's a concern. It's a massive concern. Anesthetics in older dogs are always problematic. And yes, he's been through them over and over again. But that also yeah. is yet another thing to be a little concerned by. Mm. So, and recovery time gets longer, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one thing to break a leg and have or have a hip replacement when you're 20, yeah. but when you're a grandmother that's just fallen down the stairs, it's a different thing. And he is like an old granddad now. I just really didn't want him to have to have another surgery. Mm. But equally, I know I obviously can't leave him like this, and he is in discomfort. And I, I don't want him to just live on pain relief and no. just 
hopefully get by. Mm. We need to do what's best for him, don't we? Yeah. Jack will now be referred to specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. To have to consider going through another surgery, that is absolutely harrowing. But she's such a brave girl, she's such a dedicated girl, and she's got a big heart. So Jack is incredibly lucky. In Northern England, for a reunion with his patient, Red. I'm so excited to be able to catch up with my good friends, Andy and Keely again, and just to see how their beautiful little fox, Red, is getting on. The fox needed to be spayed before she could settle in permanently at Andy and Keely's farm. When she was first rescued, she was unbelievably tame. Even though she'll never be able to return to the wild, Andy and Keeling are hoping with a little bit more time and space, more of her natural instincts will return. It'll be great to see how she's getting along, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that that's not all I'll be getting up to when I get up there. Come on. Foxes are solitary animals, and Red is now living in her own that's enclosure with inside shelter and access to an outdoor run. Good girl. Andy has been gradually Good reducing girl. human contact. Feeding her is from arm's length. There's no more hugs, unfortunately. But that's exactly what we want. She's acting like a wild animal. Hey, Andy. Hi, how are right. you doing? Yeah. Hello, Red. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. How's my patient? She's doing really well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's recovered really well. Mm. But more of a wild streak in her now, which is mm. good. When Red was first rescued, there were several attempts to rehabilitate her to the wild. They all failed, and it became clear she couldn't survive away from the farm. We absolutely are not going to put her in the face of death again, so she needs to be in a secure environment and as close to wild as this fox will ever get. I'd love to stroke you, but you know what? I know that's the wrong thing. It's tough, this animal welfare malarkey, it isn't it? It certainly is, it certainly mm. is. She just have times when she calls out for company. And it is heartbreaking to sort of uh, lock the door at night and think, oh, bless her, she's crying out. But you know it's the right thing to do at the end of the day. But I'm a little concerned for her next door neighbours because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those ducks are going to get more nervous the more wild she gets. <laughs> hey? They certainly are. That's it, remember, love thy neighbour, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Oh. Near Marlow, Buckinghamshire. Uh, hello, Sam. Hello. Sam has brought nine-year-old Jack in to see to orthopedic you. surgeon. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? And this is infamous Jack. Yes. Hello, my friend. Jack. How you doing? The unlucky Labrador has already endured seven surgeries, including two hip replacements. Now, Jack has a suspected ruptured cruciate ligament. Come Isn't on it? in. Come on. Yes, follow me. There you go, I'll follow you. There you go, Thank that's fine. You. Right, OK. It is hard to see Jack struggling. No owner likes to see their animal in pain. And he knows that he can't run around. It is hard to watch. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, yeah. See that finger moving forwards? Yeah. Look at that. Very unstable. A lot, isn't it? That should not do that. Mm -hmm. That is one ruptured cruciate ligament. Oh, he may also have damaged his meniscus, the little shock absorber. The meniscus yeah. is a piece of cartilage oh, yeah. that cushions the knee joint. When the knee's unstable, it can be damaged or torn. And in people, people describe a really sharp, stabbing kind of pain in your knee. I think that's what he's got. So he's putting a very brave face in it, but the fact that he's as limpy as he is on that leg, I think it's because he's painful. We're going to do a thing called a TPLO, which stands for Tibial Plateau Leveling Osteotomy. In a normal knee, the cruciate ligament is a big cable that holds the bones in that position. But now that's snapped, the bones are doing this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make that slope flat. So now when he stands on his leg, there's no hill. It's a bit like if you stand on an icy hill, you'll skid down the hill, and the steeper the hill, the quicker you skid. But if you stand on an ice rink, it's still icy. You don't go anywhere, unless someone gives you a push. I would normally say that these dogs will make a full recovery, and that's, that's a pretty bold statement as an orthopedic surgeon, but the vast majority of them do. He's never gonna win gold medals, put it that way, but we can definitely get this knee as good as it's gonna be. Sam now needs to say goodbye to Jack. Michael will be taking him straight into the operating theatre. You still love me, don't you? Make you better. I do feel a bit nervous about the surgery, as, as with any of the surgeries. There's always risks and things could go wrong. But I just really hope all goes well. OK. 
you gonna be brave. <laughs> I know. God, he just wants to kiss you to death. In Yorkshire. So these are the patients. I want you to have a look at. Okay. Animal rescuers Andy and Keely have asked <laughs> Scott to help them with two of their most unusual animals. Go on, take a guess. <laughs> uh, well, it's a mammal. It looks like a raccoon. It does, and that's what it's named, a raccoon dog. Okay. So, and either it looks really sweet or it's trying to get me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one. He, he is quite sweet. I have to be tentative with him. Hello. Looks like a cat. I would imagine that Scott has never seen a raccoon dog before. Oh, hello. Aren't you beautiful? Although people seem to believe it's a raccoon, it's not related to a raccoon in any way, shape or form. It's actually a canine species. The pair of raccoon dogs living at the farm are brother and sister, Bert and Baby. They were both sold as pets to separate homes, but were rejected and have now been taken in by <laughs> Andy and Keely. Hello, you're going to be nice, hey? Are you going to be nice? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they are advertised online as being dog-like and very friendly. And unfortunately, then people do buy them and realise they can't cope with them, and then they do end up in rescue centres. Today, Andy and Keely are hoping to reunite these siblings. What we're trying to do here is we want to integrate them together. But before we can do that, we need a health check from a vet before we can think about introducing animals together. Let's get to it. Let's get you in there. So raccoon dogs by their very nature are social creatures and they form a big family unit. So we want to sort of recreate that within the captive environment. We've castrated Bert simply because we don't want any undesirable offspring and not to mention the fact that they're brother and sister. So we don't want any inbreeding whatsoever. Hello Bert. So he's our male raccoon. We got him when he was younger. So he yeah, spent a lot of time around humans. Hence why he's a bit more amicable. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right, this Enough. is them amicable, is it? <laughs> wow, they, they are some they teeth. Go. They are indeed, are they? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> they, I nearly had my first raccoon dog bite. Okay. Raccoon dogs originate from East Asia and are often hunted for their fur. Wow, just feeling this fur, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastically thick. Um, unfortunately, that's part of the problem. So they originated from Japan and they were right. imported to Eastern Europe for the purpose of hunting, for the fur trade. Well, most people don't wear fur anymore. So. But unfortunately, in 2008, they found traces of raccoon dog fur in fake fur as well. You're joking. So you could be inadvertently wearing raccoon dog there. Oh my God, it doesn't feel, <laughs> doesn't feel like. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Well, let's vaccinate you, mate, and then we can reintroduce you to this little lady next door, eh? Hey? It's really important to check animals over before they're going to be integrated with another animal, just to make sure that they are healthy, and then once you've established that, to vaccinate them to protect their health. Good boy. And then you can have your friend. With Bert vaccinated and given the all clear to mingle with his sister, it's now Baby's turn. But Andy has concerns about today's experiment. Baby is quite a subdued, subordinate female. Bert, on the other hand, is quite immature, so he wants to play all the time, whereas she wants to act like a, an adult raccoon dog. So I'm worried that when they get together, he might be a bit too rough with her. Yeah. Hello, sweetie. Hello. Do you smell vet, do you? That's probably the problem. Scott now needs to capture Baby for her vaccination. Ah, gotcha. Catching my first raccoon dog was actually not quite as terrifying as I thought that it was gonna be. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> I mean it, poor baby. <laughs> right. And hey, I didn't get bitten, so successful outing. Can we have a little hug? Good girl. Yeah, that's it, good girl. Good girl, that's it. We're hoping when they're together, she'll come out of a shell more so she can become more of a raccoon dog, hopefully. They play nicely. They play nice, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll give you your vaccination. Good girl. Hey, and then you can finally live the rest of your life with your brother. Okay. Hey, you're all done. Cutting's oh, over. Like a medic that stands on the side of a football field just in case of injury, I need to be here to make sure that when these two raccoon dogs get introduced, that they Don't rip each other to shreds. If there is any kind of injury, they can bleed out quite quickly, and it's a really important idea. Nervous. A little bit. Yeah. But she seems to be looking for him. Yeah. So that's a good sign. In Yorkshire, Scott is on standby as raccoon dogs Baby and Bert are finally given the chance pretty. to live together as a family unit. All right, Andy, shall we uh, bring bro over? But be gentle with your sister, young man. They were both sold as pets when they were just babies, but later given up. 
The fear is that the more boisterous Bert could be aggressive and hurt his sister. Just place him down. Go okay, now. Remember, you're a guest, yeah. so be polite. Mm -hmm. Let's just hope there's no bloodshed. No overt aggression, straight yeah. up, so that's good. And you know how siblings can fight, don't you? Quite right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Good boy, Bert. A little bit of grooming going on there. That's got to be a good sign. Yeah, really good sign. Yeah. The introduction's gone really well. The mutual grooming that's occurring and the fact that there's no aggression whatsoever, I would feel comfortable leaving them now as a little family unit. We'll obviously keep an eye on them and monitor them on a regular basis to make sure there's no sort of untoward aggression or um, injuries to either of them, but I think it's looking promising. Little brother, come home to roost. With the raccoon dogs happily settled... Right, so this is our newest resident, youngest animal on site. Andy and Keeley have got one more test for Scott and his knowledge of exotics. Looks like a mutant mouse <laughs> with a echidna-like spiky coverage with weird sort of rabbit-like feet. I think we try to make Scott's visits here a little bit more interesting. I'm sure he's used to cats, dogs, rabbits, guinea pigs, so I think something a little bit different to spice up his life and to test his knowledge, really. This is a common tenric. Mate, I'm going to stop you right there. There's nothing common about that. <laughs> <laughs> Peaches is an eight-week-old baby that came from a zoo and is currently living in Andy and Keeley's home until she grows up. Yeah, she's That's quite fast. Oh, my Lord, she's so weird. <laughs> you are so incredible looking. Look at that nose. We'll test you on which animal it's related to. Mm -hmm. Take a guess. That would be a clue. A long nose. An extremely long nose, in fact. Oh, it can't be an elephant. It is, yeah. So one of its <laughs> relatives is an elephant. I'm absolutely amazed to find out that a tenric is actually related to an elephant. And apparently in their evolution, one of them decided to move to Madagascar, where they have lots of trees, so they were smaller, and then you've got elephants roaming on the plains and they got to grow a hell of a lot bigger. Well, you see, you <laughs> learn something new every day, a bit. <laughs> I have such respect for Andy and Keely. They are surrounded by animals that they look after 24-7. And the fact that then when they come back to their sanctuary, their home, and they still have peaches in their care just shows how much they love the animals they're looking after. How lucky are you, mm -hmm. hmm? In the penthouse suite with Andy and Keely, eh? <laughs> Use your will, we will make you feel nice. Use your will, <laughs> Near Marlow, nine-year-old Labrador Jack is about to undergo surgery on his ruptured cruciate ligament. There we go. All right, all right, you're all right. Yes, you're all right. Oh, thank you. So the first part of the procedure is to get inside the knee joint. Right, I'm just going to crack on now and actually look at the cruciate ligament or what's left of it and also to check the meniscus, the shock absorber. Because if he's got a torn meniscus and we miss it, he's going to stay lame. So we're going to push this in here and see that white thing? That there is part of his shock absorber which is torn. So that is a torn meniscus. If we didn't check that meniscus and left that torn within, no matter what we do with stabilising the knee, he'd still be sore, which would be a failure. With the fragments of the torn meniscus removed, Michael can now start stabilising Jack's knee. Right, ready? Yeah. Go. And what we're going to do now is the nuts and bolts of the procedure. We're going to actually make the top of the tibia, which at the moment is on a slope. We're going to make a cut in the bone and we're going to move it such that it's flat. And we're going to stabilise it in that new position with the plate and screws. Power screw driving. Makes you feel like you work for McLaren. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> This is the last screw going in. Beautiful. So the plate is in. So we're just closing them up now. Outside, Jack's owner Sam is waiting for news. She's been Scott's vet nurse for three years. But right now, that's not helping. This is Jack's eighth surgery. And just because he's got through other anaesthetics doesn't mean that this one's going to go completely to plan. So I know what to expect, but it doesn't stop me worrying. I just can't wait to see him, know he's okay, and just get him home and give him lots of love and cuddles. That test that we did before, with this finger moving forwards, we do the same test now. Rock solid, stable. 
So a bit of added pressure, given that it's a friend's nurse's dog. I guess she's a friend as well now. All looks good, feels good. Um, I'm happy. Look, Jack, someone hello. here to see you. Jack. Hello. hello. Oh, hello. There you go. Hello, Mum. It all went really well. His meniscus was torn, as we suspected. His knee is stable, the plate positioning is good. Well, we're very pleased that his his eighth surgery has <laughs> has all gone well and <laughs> and look, you're gonna be normal again. Jack is just everything to me. I love him to pieces. So it's a huge relief to know that everything's gone well and that he's um he's coming home with me. I reckon this <laughs> Oh, is what he's food. after. Give him some of that. Watch this. Mr. Jack, what's this? Jack, look. Oh, oh yummy. Oh, yes, I'm a Labrador. He's so, he's, look at that. Wow. He's like half asleep. <laughs> he definitely seems like he's back to normal Jack self eating so soon after coming around from his anaesthetic that he's already got his nose straight into a bowl of food. That you've got it all over your nose. The heathing powers of a bowl of food. We usually keep them overnight, but because his mum's a vet nurse, he's going to go home and recover with her. <laughs> but the hard work is just about to start for Sam. Jack will have to put up with being confined to a cage for the next few weeks, with only short daily walks allowed. Such a nice dog, aren't you? That's your lot, I think. All right, mate. Giving me get well soon. Me. Don't get fat. Get well soon, and I'll see you in six weeks. Lovely. <laughs> OK, Thank right, you. all the best. Before Scott leaves Yorkshire, Andy has asked him to examine their oldest alpaca, senior citizen George. Hello, mate. You must be George. I must be honest, I'm not the alpaca vet that I could be. We don't really have a huge amount of them running around the hills of Richmond, so it is a new species for me to work with, but they do seem lovely. George acts as a headmaster in this group, so he's in charge of the adolescents. What are the challenges? of looking after these particular creatures? Well, they're fantastic animals to work with, but uh, they're renowned for doing one thing, and that one thing is spitting. Oh, that's <laughs> delightful, isn't it? Everything that's worked here has had it in the mouth, full in the face. Good to know. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. But despite the heads up... <laughs> oh, you spat right in my mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there in lies the challenges to alpaca farming. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I'm just having a nice chat with Andy and looking at all these beautiful alpacas, one of them spits right down the back of my throat. It's totally disgusting. <laughs> <coughs> oh, man. Oh, go away. Stop it. <laughs> Despite having a bad taste in his mouth from the welcome party, Scott is not going to be deterred from taking on George's health check. Come on, sweetheart. That's a good boy. Here we go. Perfect. Oh, OK. You can let me have a little look at you. Good boy. Good boy, I know. You just have a look in here. George is a 19-year-old alpaca, arguably one of the oldest in the country. Um, he's got a special place for us because he's the boss of the park. He's got a lot of attitude, but he's also got a lot of affection. And he's got a few loose teeth in here. Yeah. Well, they're still healthy and they're still within those cavities, so I don't think they need to be removed. But I suppose, considering his age, it's no big surprise yeah, yeah. that he's got some loose teeth. It's amazing he's got his teeth still in his <laughs> head. <laughs> Quite, isn't yeah. it really, hey? With no infection or gingivitis found, George has avoided a dental procedure this time round. Scott now needs to listen to his chest and heart. Hey, 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 George, come on, mate. Come on, come on, come on. George decides that he doesn't want me to listen to his heart. He's an old man, he knows himself, and so he starts to give me a bit of a kick. Hey, 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 no kicking. So it's nice and strong and slow. This boy has still got some time in him yet, I think. Good, Good boy, George. Well, you know, you were kicking me, but uh, we can put that behind us, hey? Eh? Scott's last check is on George's ageing legs. So what I'm just feeling is, uh, rather than a sort of smooth, flexible, well-lubricated joint, this is actually like nuts and bolts. I mean, really, what he's got here, Andy, is just the arthritic knees of an old man. Yeah. As far as George's joints are concerned, I think a little bit of anti-inflammatory on a daily basis would be fair enough. But I think George really just needs a lot of TLC and a lot of love. 
love and it's very clear that he quite enjoys a cuddle. <laughs> he likes a bit of affection. Yeah, That's right, so yeah. I think just keep on doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Lots of love for the old boy. There you go. Hey? We can do that, can't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Just as we're finishing up with George, Mother Nature takes its course. It's not really our kind of show. <laughs> and on that note, I think it's time for me to go home. Well, Andy, thanks very much again. Another eventful trip. <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much for your help. And Thank always you, a so pleasure yeah. and uh, never a chore, but actually there's always a lot of chores. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly will. We'll find some more for you next time as well. I'm sure you will. All right, <laughs> cheers, mate. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. There's one thing that I can be certain of in Sheffield, the learning curve never stops. This time I can add alpacas, raccoon dogs, and even Tenrex to my veterinary CV, but I absolutely love my new patient list, even the ones that spit. Hugo, what's this? Are you interested or do you just want to sleep some more? 140 miles south, Hugo is now back home and his devoted mum, Natalie, is preparing dinner. Uh, is it steak? No, it's dog food. Oh, I want steak. Well, what are you having for dinner? Can I have some of that? Here we go. Dinner. It's been four days since Scott removed a suspicious lump from the bull mastiff's mouth, and Natalie has just received the test results. Scott gave us a call to tell us the good news that he has the all clear, which is, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant news. I was saying I wasn't worried, but underneath I was just desperate to get those results. And I don't think I'd realised how worried I was until we heard that he was okay, because I got really teary and was just so relieved. Having a nice snooze there, Hugo. You are the most beautiful dog in the world, aren't you, Hugo? You're so handsome. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on, team geriatric. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen two wonky dogs? <laughs> no. And two months after the surgery to repair Jack's ruptured cruciate ligament, the Labrador is back to his normal happy self, enjoying a stroll in the sun with Scott's Border Terrier, Betty. Look at you two, eh? The king and queen of the wonky dogs. <laughs> Last year, Betty survived spinal surgery. And just like Jack, she's also bounced back. Good girl, Betty. Good running. Aww. It's lovely to see them both happy, both recovered, as well as they can do from the, their ordeals and the surgeries that they've had to have. Jack, come on. Jack, come on. Well done. Good boy. Not bad. Betty and Jack have done so well and come on so far from where they were that it's definitely been really worth it. Well, he is walking just so well, isn't he? Oh, I think so. I think he's done really well. Yeah, he's putting his weight yeah. nicely between, well, all the legs, Jack. considering all the legs are a bit problematic. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think what's so sweet about him is that he's eternally happy. And it just shows that it's it's worth everything you've been through, I think. To... I think so. Yeah, it's not been easy at points at all, but... No. Then when you see him happy running around and being like a normal dog, it's, yeah. it's lovely to see. I think what dogs remind us is that you just need to live in the moment and enjoy each day. And both my and Sam's dogs have been through the ringer and we could have chosen to finish it there, but we pushed through hoping for the best and that's exactly what we've got. Our dogs aren't perfect, but they're happy and they're smiling and they're enjoying each day and we're enjoying every day that we have with them. Come on, come, come on. on. Oh, I know, it's so exciting. 